Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you. The Morning Majority, 630. WMAL. 837. You know, guys, when I look at the situation in Libya right now, I sort of am reminded of that old joke about the, the guy who had a little sports car convertible and every day he'd drive by the house and every day this dog would chase the convertible. Mm-hmm. This happened day after day after day after day. And finally, the guy who owned the sports car got tired of being chased by the dog. He drives past the house. The dog takes effort after the sports car and he stops it. The dog doesn't know what to do. And the guy in the, the sports car turns to the dog and says, now that you've got it, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> and, you know, this is often something that happens. Now that this thing that you sought so long has occurred, what is next? How do you handle it? And that's what we have in, in Libya right now. We have, we have a, a guy by the name of Muammar Gaddafi who's out, and we're not really sure what's going to happen next. Well, Waleed Ferris is on the phone here. You've seen him on Fox News talking about uh, the situation in Libya, and, and that's where I want to start with this, Waleed. I want to know, you know, now that we sort of have Gaddafi, he's not captured, but he's sort of out of power for the moment, what happens next? Well, I love that story of the car. I'm going to use it in my research. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome to use it. Thank you. Uh, well, indeed, as we're speaking right now, rebel forces are surrounding the last enclave, the last bastion of Babel Azizia in northern Tripoli. It's going to take some time. We've seen encircled compounds. We've seen encircled cities in the past. It may go faster if NATO will also bombard them. But the real question is the one you've asked, you've raised. What will happen after Gaddafi's demise? Who will take over? And that's the biggest question of the day. My projection is that the current rebel force is going to move to Tripoli. The interim council is going to move from Gaza to Tripoli as soon as Babel Azizia is down, form a government, an interim government, uh, control the various ministries, manage them, run them, keep the flow of oil you know, going out, uh, sell it at the price that France and us would like to see it. <laughs> but they will have two problems, quickly first problem is going to be the remnants of the Qazafi regime. Yes, the regime is gone down, but those forces are still omnipresent in many places in Libya. So look more to what happened in Iraq or in Somalia. They will, the regime will become the new rebels, and the rebels will become the new regime. Interesting. That's challenge hmm. number one. What, what about a form of government? Do you have any sense of that yet? What form a new government might take? The, it's like a genome. The, the, the new government is already be understood from who forms the interim council what are those political forces and the saying in washington and in brussels has been we don't know who the rebels are guess what we do know who these rebels are because part of them are former military former bureaucrats former diplomats who were part of the Qaddafi state these are mostly secular people but next to them and on the ground and we can see it clearly through the you know tv coverage especially in the arab world you have large militias, a large amount of militias. Most of these militias are Islamists. So we're going to end up having in Tripoli a combo of secular and Islamists. And you know the game. Once the Islamist militias are inside the institution, right. A, they are not going to disarm easily. And that's the next problem. It may be too early to talk about it, but we, we have to see it already. What what do you think are some ways, I mean, obviously, neither Obama nor probably the American public has any stomach for a big push to help create this government to rebuild in the same way that you've done somewhere like Iraq, but how are other ways you can have, the American government could, could maybe have influence over how things fall together here? Uh, well, first of all, we are very late in the game. Yeah. Uh, as for Egypt and Tunisia, we are absolutely late. That's my projection. Uh, since I wrote my book, The Coming Revolution, last year, I was already projecting that we're going to be late if the revolutions will come. Now we are nine months into those revolts. Why? Because instead of identifying and finding the NGOs, the civil society forces, the weak segments, and empower them, like women's movements, students' movement, minorities, artists, etc., those whom we'd like to see becoming the new society. Most of what our democracy agencies or foreign policy institutions under this administration have done was to engage with and partner guests with whom? With the Muslim Brotherhood, mm. with the Islamists, including in Egypt, Tunisia, and in Libya. So now, these forces are going to come and say, we're going to claim the government. And it would be very difficult for the administration or for any other European government to come and say, oh, no, we don't like you. We'd like to have the other forces of civil society. We lost about nine months, if not a year. So now the only thing we can do is to make sure that the interim government, at first, from
from the first weeks will disarm those militias. Because if those militias will enter the political process before being disarmed, they'll become like Hezbollah in Lebanon all the time. Right, exactly. Too late. What, what are surrounding countries saying? What are they thinking right now as they watch Gaddafi lose power? And what impact will it have on those countries? Well, you have the bad guys, of course, across the region, the other clones, the dictators. Uh, I'd say Assad is very nervous about what he sees. It may take a longer time in Syria. It's a different ball game in Syria. Mm-hmm. But psychologically, he is seeing another dictator going down. Bashir of Sudan, who, by the way, is indicted by the International Criminal Court for genocide, would be nervous. The Iranian leadership would also be nervous. Every dictatorship in the region that has been engaged in violence against its own citizens will see that this is a model. The other governments will have to go fast in terms of constitutional reforms. I'd say Morocco would be, you know, monitoring this. Jordan would be monitoring this and making sure that their reforms are going as fast as possible. All right. I know this is a prediction. We never know what's going to happen. But if you look down the road, say 10, 15 years from now, are we going to be in a better position with Libya as far as an ally or as far as a government that we can trust? Or are we going to be in the same boat that we are now with Gaddafi or maybe even worse off? I'm not going to use my past skills of lawyer. But I'm going to say <laughs> in 15 years from now, all depend who, who who would have been in Washington and in Brussels during those 10 years, at least, or the next eight years. It's not about politics, about direction. If we, as West, engage with civil societies in 15 years, we should be looking at a South Mediterranean interim democracy, maybe mediocre, maybe making progress, you know, maybe accelerating as was the case in Latin America or some parts of Asia. But if we continue to partner with the Muslim Brotherhood, what we're going to see south of the Mediterranean are a collection of 18 to 20 Islamic states that would look like the Taliban plus oil, mm. plus technology. So it all depends not just on them, but on what we're going to do about it as well. So if there's one thing the United States could do to set Libya on the path in the right direction, what would it be? It would be to condition our huge forthcoming foreign aid, those $40 billion promised by the G20, the part that's going to go to the region and to Libya, with disarming the militias, and with ensuring that there will be a freedom for all political parties and that the Islamist militias are not going to be forming a or another authoritarian regime. That's the only policy I see that would ensure that Libya is not going to move to another authoritarian regime. All right, Dr. Ferris, great to have you on the program. As always, we appreciate your insights.